good to be back in the house with all of this morning. We would, if uh, you want to be with us, uh, you can turn to the book of John, in the 17th chapter. We want to uh, read a few scriptures here and, and pray that the Lord will take these, the reading. I know His word will not return void. They might. Uh, and it's a, I can just only read it, uh, not only to you, but everyone that is uh, out there in the world listening. We have uh, the opportunity to preach to or teach to uh, other people besides the ones that are in here. And uh, I'm so thankful that I have that privilege. And uh, uh, I hope this morning that uh, what I read will, will find a lodging place in the hearts of each one here. And if there be one here that's lost this morning, uh, while you are alive, you have an opportunity to uh, pray to the Lord. Amen. But now, when you die, that's it. Right. And so this morning, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to just tell you the truth about it. But in John chapter 17, verse 1, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Amen. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. We want to go to the Lord in word of prayer and after the reading. Our Father, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity that you've given us to read thy word. We pray now, Lord, that you would let the Holy Spirit do its work here and follow the might mingle. That it might talk to people's hearts. So Father, tell them what a great privilege it is to know you and the forgiveness of sin. Yes, Lord. Thank you so much for this day and thank you for this uh, the, the health and strength that you've given to each one and to those that have been sick. We thank you, Father, now and ask again that you would bless our word. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus in the midst of his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Now, if you would uh, have studied your Bible very much, you know that uh, Jesus was with the Father in eternity before the world was. Right. And we'll see this in a few minutes and he had great pleasure with him and uh, they knew one another and there was a plan that Jesus would come to this world that he would live in the flesh for some 33 years and that he would die on the cross of Calvary and as he died he would shed his blood on the cross and that that blood that come out of his side was the uh, healing of the soul. It was the saving of the soul. And this is the only way by, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can one be saved. And so here he is saying uh, the hour is come. And he's talking about that time when that he would go to the cross of Calvary and be crucified. But notice as he said this, he made a plea with God to glorify him. Now, if 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 he hadn't have been glorified, his plea would have been in vain, and his death would have been uh, in vain also. But what did God say here? He said uh, uh, he told him that I have glorified thee, and will uh, glorify thee again. And so his prayer was answered. Now notice, but. Before we see that, he says, "My hour is come." Now, if in the in the in the Bible there is two or three places where that Jesus told 
the people that my hour has not come. And one of them was when his mother was uh, asked him at a wedding to furnish them with wine. And he, speaking to her, said, my time has not yet come. But she told him, she says, you do whatsoever he says do. And so he was saying, woman, my time is not ready for me to be die, to, to die because the plan had already been made before, before the earth was that he would die at a certain time. And the reason that he would die was for the sins of the world. Amen. Now, <clears throat> So there was another place where that uh, his brothers wanted him to go up and present himself to the crowd. Well, he did present himself to the crowd, but it was on the cross. Here, he said, no, I'm not going yet. My time is not yet. He went later. And it's the same way all through the, the scriptures, there, there was a certain time for Jesus Christ to die, to die on the cross of Calvary. So here he says... Here, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee. And this was the way that he glorified God by keeping his word all, the, all through his life and, and, and dying on the cross of Calvary and telling the, the people about God. So he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh. Now, when we see this here, we see that Jesus Christ was born of woman and he came into this world in the flesh and God gave him the power to walk perfectly upon this earth for some 33 years and not sin. Now he was the only person, only one that had ever walked upon this earth in a fleshly body like we have and we know this morning that this fleshly body that we have is terrible. Mm -hmm. It has a desire to do wrong. Right. And that, that gets some people and some people say, no, I don't never want to do wrong. Well, I think they are being deceived because right. this flesh has a desire to do things that is not pleasing to God. You're right. But anyway, God gave Jesus this body and let him come in the spirit here and walk upon this earth 33 years and not sin. This qualified him, this made him perfect in flesh and in spirit. And when he died on the cross, he was a complete, perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. Now this, people, is the only one, this is the only thing that you can depend upon for salvation. Amen. You can, you can try working, uh, working yourself up. Uh, day after day trying to do, do good things. You can worship idols. You can do whatever. But listen, Jesus Christ's blood is the only way for salvation. And, and that's it. And people will say, well, you know, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. No, you don't have to do it. A lot of the things like baptism or church membership, whatever that is, it's pleasing to God for you to make this effort after you're saved. But baptism will not save you. Uh, joining the church will not save you. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so after you are saved, then God expects you to get in line just like uh, every other Christian has and, and take the yoke upon you and work for him. And so this does not save you, but it's it's honoring God because he lets you be saved. So here he says in verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Amen. And so we see here as many as thou hast given him. So there is an amount there is an amount of people that God has chosen. Right. There is an amount of people that will be with Him in glory. Now, we don't know who they are. We don't know how many they are. And it's not our concern because our concern is to tell the whole world Amen. about Jesus Christ and what He, what he come to this world and done 
uh, in order for them to be saved. But as far as me pointing out here and saying, you're not an elect, you are an elect, it's not, it, it, I can't do it. Amen. And so God is the only one that knows this, but he, he chose those. And so here, he says here to, that uh, he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So there is an amount. Now notice, and this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God. And so life eternal is the only way that you can know God. You can, you can make a false profession and not know God and, and be deceived by the devil for years and years. And people have done it for 10 to 15 and all of their life. And a lot of times the Lord had mercy on them and saved them. And they said, I thought I was saved. But I wasn't. So we need this morning to look at our lives Amen. and to check our lives out and to see if we are truly a Christian. And we can know if we're a true, true quick Christian by the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts and assuring us that when we when we get into this right here and start reading this and studying this, listen, it will reveal to you. Whether or not you're in the same spirit as this word is. And so many times, so many times we get away from the Lord and we get in a, in a backslidden condition. And if you know what I'm talking about this morning, you go to the, God's word and say, well, I want to read some. And it's just like reading a newspaper. Mm -hmm. It don't mean nothing to you. Well, listen, the spirit that is within you is not bearing witness because you have you have uh, crippled, if you would, you have you have hurt this Holy Spirit that's within you. And listen, that is not a good thing to do. Because listen, you'll go sometimes for days and weeks and years and not have the the fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ that you could have if you had to stay straight with the Lord. So this is what he's. I believe what he's talking about in the end that. Uh, the eternal life and, and this is eternal life that you might know it the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent and so you can stay in fellowship with him and uh, you can keep this flesh under condemnation and, and it's not saying that it won't flare up again and flare up again and cause you problems but you can and it's 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 not an easy battle right and, uh, and the farther you the farther you get away from trying to keep this flesh out of control, the, the more worry there is with your soul, and it, it causes you more problems all the time. So, when these things happen to you, when you uh, go astray, if you would, or when you sin, uh, and, and you are, you're going to sin, because you ain't got a perfect body. If you had a perfect body, you would never die. But see... You have a, you've got a body that's going to have to die, and this body is what is causing a lot of your sins in your and your problems. And so you have to bridle this body and keep it under condemnation, keep it under control, and try to make it do the things that it should do because it don't want to do them. And so here again, talking about Jesus being glorified. Now, he was glorified several different times, but notice here uh, in verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. This is God talking to Jesus. I have finished the work which thou, no, this is Jesus. I have glorified thee, Father, uh, on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now he asks, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. Which, with the glory which I had with thee before the world began. So you see, here is proof in God's word that he and Jesus, God and Jesus was together before God said, let there be light. Before the earth was, they were together. And he said, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, and so notice here, he says, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now, before, when Jesus came to this earth, if you'll think about these things, some of the glory, he said, I'm going to glorify thee. 
and he glorified him when he was walking upon this earth. Uh, uh, take for instance the episode I just thought of uh, him walking on the water with, uh, to go out to the, out to the boat and he, and he asked and he told Peter to come. He, God was glorifying him. He was showing how, how he could, what he could do. Uh, he was, uh, this, uh, uh, the suffering and, uh, and all that he done on the cross. Listen, that was for a time and then he was going to die and he would be, uh, have another glory. And he did have this other glory when he appeared to the people on the road to Damascus when he when he walked through the walls, to walk through the doors and things of this nature. God is glorif glorifying him in these things. And all of these things that he done, he did. And uh, 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 even when he was being crucified, Pilate said to the crowd, I find no fault with him. I find no fault with him. They could, nobody could ever find any fault with him. And so God was glorifying Jesus all this time. But listen, the, the thing of it is, they were sort of like the people of today are. Everybody's got their own thing and they won't listen to nobody. And everything is in a turmoil. And, and it was the same way here with the people there at, uh, at Jesus' time. They, 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 they just wanted to kill him. And so right. here we see that God is glorifying him in these things. And uh, another one that I, I, I looked up and it was when Jesus was hanging on the cross and, G, and, and the centurion uh, <coughs> looked and, and as they were sticking that, that sword and uh, spear in his side and he said, truly, this was the Son of God. Now, listen, that was one of the Roman soldiers that said that, but listen, no telling how many people heard that. Mm -hmm. And no telling how many uh, people, well, they wrote it down. So a lot of people heard it. And listen, it glorified Jesus Christ. And the thing that's so wonderful about this, this here is that if he glorified Jesus, if he glorified the apostles, Listen, he'll glorify you too. He will, and, and I don't mean, I don't mean like you're going to fly away wings and all this and, and walk through walls and all this. But listen, he will put his approval on the works that you do. He will help you in this life and he will uh, comfort you through the Holy Spirit when things get rough. And when times get bad, he will, he will be there to comfort you and to, and to let other people see that you're serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the things that we need to think about when when we're uh, uh, trying to serve the Lord. Now, we want to go on. Now, in verse 6, he says, And I have manifested thy name unto the men, that's the God speaking to, which thou, no, that's Jesus, I'm sorry, I have manifested thy name unto men, which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given thee are of thee. For I have given unto them the word which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I come out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. And so these are some of the things that a saved person uh, can understand. That God did send Jesus to this world to die for the sins of the world. To die for the sins that uh, people uh, would endure and that they would ask forgiveness for. He sent Jesus Christ to do these things. And he said here, notice in, in, in this, he says in verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world Amen. because the world is sinful. The world has nothing to do uh, with salvation. The world is a hindrance to salvation. And the world is the only thing about it is here is for us to, to live upon until we get ready to meet the Father and get ready to go. When we, and so he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So all that 
God has given to Jesus were those that he chose in eternity and they are his mm -hmm. and he has given them to Jesus because Jesus Christ went to the cross and paid the price he died on the cross and he paid that price for uh, all that would believe and all that God had chosen and so he's got he says that that Jesus has got them so he says now notice in verse 10 and all mine are thine and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And so again, here we see Jesus being glorified by God, uh, even, even after the, his death, because we'll see some. And he says in verse 11, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me. And so we are we are in Jesus' hands, and He has said to G, to God, keep them because I'm coming to you. And so we are protected by God's hand and by Jesus' hand. We're in a double double prince hand of, of God and Jesus. And listen. We need to understand that the devil cannot do anything whatsoever without the permission of God. He cannot do anything. And this ought to help us to be assured and say, well, hey, I'll not fear. I'll not fear death. I'll not fear this. I'll not fear that. Because God is in control of our lives and, 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 and everything that we have upon this earth. So in verse, verse 12, he says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou gavest me. I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. Now the son of perdition we know is Judas Iscariot. And he was a devil, the Bible says, from the beginning. Amen. And uh, he was not in the hand of Jesus. He was not, he was not one of the saved. He never was saved. He was, he was a devil. Amen. He was put here in Jesus' life <coughs> to carry out and that the Bible might be fulfilled. He betrayed the Christ. And so we see then that none of the saved that God chose, and he didn't choose Judas Iscariot as a saved person. He chose, he chose him to be with him, to be an entrance to him, to fulfill the scripture. And so here he says, uh, in verse 13, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And so there is a joy, there is a joy to enjoy. And if we can keep our bodies under subjection, if we can, if we can think upon the good things that uh, Jesus made possible for us, we can enjoy life and enjoy it to the fullest. And he said, I have given them thy word, and the word, the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So we see here then this morning that, that people that are of the world hate the Christians mm -hmm. because the God of this world is their God, and that is the devil and what they can enjoy while they're here. And they hate Christians because if Christians try to be a help to them, try to talk to them, uh, try to tell them about salvation, it irritates them to no end because they have got a lost body and a lost soul. They're completely 100% lost. And it's just like throwing uh, water on gasoline. And, and so, uh, uh, you, you need to need to think the, about these things. He says, now, in verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Set them apart. Thy word is truth. Amen. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And so, here is why we're here. 
and why that we're we're living a life that we are God has sent us here and we are to be witnesses to him uh, for him and we are to tell people about uh, him and, and uh, uh, honor his name and glorify his name and when we stand before him uh, and at the judgment of uh, uh, at the uh, passing out of rewards we'll receive rewards and uh, there'll be crowns and those crowns you'll have the honor and the glory of laying them down at Jesus Christ's feet because he's the one that deserves it. We have not done anything. We were created. We were put here. Jesus sent a sacrifice for us. He called us out and he asked us to do these things for him. And so this morning, this is why that we're here. We're trying to honor him. We're trying to uh, learn more about him and we're trying to set an example to the world. Hey, we're Christians and we want to serve the Lord. And so this is, this is some of the things that we are uh, in need of or need to understand. He says now in verse 19, he says, And for their sakes I sanctify myself that I also might be sanctified to the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And so that covers us all that believe on, the, on his word. And he, uh, maybe uh, here in some of this, he's talking about the uh, apostles. But anyway, we believe through the word. And he says here, he says, he wants to neither pray out for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So this is our lesson for this morning, and I hope that it's, uh, it's something been read that will uh, encourage you, uh, something that will give you a little uh, boost that will carry you on till you can get another little boost. and. Uh, while you're in between booths, you can be a witness for the Lord. Amen. Because that's what we're here for, is to serve Him, to be a witness for Him. And uh, we, uh, we thank you for the privilege that we have to read God's Word before you this morning. And, and I pray that each one of us will have a good day. Uh, and praise the Lord for it. Thank you all.